bless and welcome to Pastor on Call. My name is Pastor Mike. It's a pleasure to have you. You join me on this video. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for your subscriptions. I hope that you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying um, uh, making these videos for you. Today, I want to talk about something very, very important, and it's something that I deal with very often in the church. Um, it's, I'm going to title this video, Overcoming Addictions. Overcoming Addictions. Um, addiction involves a craving uh, for something intensely. It's, it's an intense craving. Um, it's uh, also the loss of control over that which you are craving. Um, the thing about addiction, the most difficult part of addiction, is that it, it, it hijacks your brain. And so the deeper that we become addicted to a substance or something, the more difficult it is to overcome the addiction. Um, I have counseled hundreds of people in the areas of addictions, ranging from drug abuse to being addicted to pornography, and the list goes on and on. And it's an extremely difficult topic because the deeper you get into the addiction, the deeper it is to overcome that addiction. So um, I first want to just tell you this, that I believe that Jesus Christ can and will deliver you from addiction. I believe that. I want to read uh, to you here from Romans chapter 6, 14, just to encourage you if you're dealing with any form of addiction. It says, uh, Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. So the word says that sin shall not have dominion over you. But it pains me to see so many Christians that are enslaved by sin, that are, that are slaves to it, or simply in a life of sin. Um, a believer can overcome addiction in a matter of seconds. But to do this, to do this effectively, means we must not lean upon human philosophies. We must lean upon the Word of God. Now just keep this in mind, that overcoming sin or addiction is an accomplished fact. But overcoming self, overcoming self, overcoming habits, or addictions for some can be a lifelong affair. Let's go to the Word of God also, where um, where David explains this here quite eloquently, I might add, in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, 9 through 11. Psalms 119, 9 through 11. He writes, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. With my whole heart, he says, I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Listen to what he says here in verse 11. For thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Whenever the mind, whenever the mind is diverted, keep this in, keep, keep this in mind now. Whenever the mind is diverted from Jesus Christ, you will place your gaze, your focus on things of this world. Take your mind, take your focus of Christ, and your focus becomes on things of this world. The world tries to transform us from the outside in. The world tries to, to suggest remedies of addiction from the outside in. Jesus Christ reforms us from the inside out. Um, I don't mean to make this teaching sound um, as though the situation is not severe. And in your case, if you're watching and you have a severe addiction, it is severe. And I don't mean to make the solution to this addiction sound um, uh, simple either. 
as I pointed out earlier. But, but just remember this. Um, change or the deliverance from addiction starts from the inside out, not the, the outside in. Amen? Now, there are folks that, 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 that suggest a 12-step a recovery program. Um, and I'm not saying anything bad about them. I'm, I'm just saying for me in our church and our ministry and, and, in, and in my, um, and in my uh, the folks that have come to me, that has not worked as well. Um, in other words, 12, 12 steps, in other words, fast more, pray more, go to church more, throw the TV set out, uh, you know, throw your books away, uh, but uh, pinch yourself every time you, you have a bad thought. Uh, that doesn't work for the long term. It, it may work for the short term, but not for the long term. Um, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. When we do these things, it diverts our attention from faith in Christ to something that deceptively begins to happen. Um, it diverts our attention from faith in Christ, or it's called sanctification or change by works. With sanctification by works, it, it, it never gets to the root of the problem. So remember, Sin is merely, or an addiction is merely triggered from something deep within. So remember, sin is an external act. The addiction, whatever the addiction is, is an external act. But that which triggers that addiction is something internal. The more that we sin, the more that we sin means the more that our heart has not been transformed or converted. So how do we eradicate addictions? How do we eradicate selfishness? Let me give you, let me give you some examples. How do, we, how do we eradicate selfishness? Let's just change the subject from something severe to something like, how do you eradicate selfishness? How do you eradicate anger? In other words, if, if you have a, a problem with anger or you have a problem with selfishness, how do you eradicate that? Well, you would eradicate that the same way you would eradicate addiction. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, For whatsoever is born of God, who overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. By faith, by faith, the flesh is kept under control and cardinal desires are subdued. By faith in Christ, believing in Christ, filling our hearts with Christ, fellowship with Christ, we sub. Do the carnal desires. Now, this may seem this may seem too easy for you, and in fact, it is so easy to do, but yet for one who has been addicted for a long period of time, I will say you will need someone in your life to help guide you, to encourage you. Listen to this. The word addiction is derived from a Latin term to be to mean enslaved by bound by. Anyone who has struggled to overcome an addiction or has tried to help somebody else or to do so understands the word enslavement. So I can tell you this with a great deal of experience. In all of my years counseling people who have been addicted, this works the best. I'm going to take you to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now, trust me and pay attention to this. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Say that with me. But seek ye first. First, seek ye first the kingdom. Where is the kingdom of God? Here. The kingdom of God is here. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does that mean? His righteousness. In other words, my right standing with him is not in the things that I do. It's the things that he's done. You are righteous in him, not because of what you've done, not because you've, you, you haven't smoked a, a cigarette today. That is not righteousness. That is not overcoming addiction. Seek ye first him, his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In the simplest of terms, as David said, how does a young man cleanse his ways? By heeding according to thy word. Thy word. Junk in, junk out. Word in, holiness out. Listen, it works. It works every single time. Don't let anybody make you think that because you didn't have that candy bar today or because you didn't curse today or because you didn't watch pornography today, that somehow that because you did something that that suggests that you've overcome that addiction. The way you overcome addiction is by pouring Jesus Christ inside and changing from the inside out. Remember, your addiction did not happen overnight. And you have to be able to make a conscious effort to get yourself saturated in the word of God. And if you fall, and you will fall, we all do, do not be discouraged. The closer you are to Jesus, the more his word is poured in you, the further you are away from sin. You've got to be a slave to Jesus. If you're a slave to Jesus, you won't be a slave to him. Didn't he say you can't serve two masters? Amen. I have never, listen to me, I'm going to close with this. I have never, ever, ever met a single person in my entire 30 years of ministry that has been addicted to Jesus Christ, that was addicted to a thing or a person. Get yourself on fire for Jesus and watch yourself burn. And that's the secret, my friend. I don't care what anybody tells you out there. The closer you are to Jesus, the more you are a slave to Jesus, you can't share that throne with any other. I'm going to pray with you right now. I'm going to pray with you right now that the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, would invade you and burn out that sin and that desire and that taste for that crazy addiction. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill my friends. Fill these people, Lord, with a hunger for you. Fill them, Lord, with an addiction for the cross of Jesus Christ. Father, and for those that need direction and those that need guidance, send a man or woman of God in their life to help encourage and guide them. I pray that right now in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. Please don't forget to put your comments down below. Thank you for subscribing. May God bless you. Stay tuned and we will see you around in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Hallelujah.